We're back. A lot of show tonight. My first guest this evening has been my lead-in since I began hosting uh, Late Night. Uh, he's always been extremely kind and generous to me and my show. Please welcome a very good guy, the host of The Tonight Show, Jay Leno. Let's get him out of here. Good. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, oh, we many, pumped, uh, we many, nitrous into the room tonight. Yes, yeah. yes, very good. Many fond memories in this room. <laughs> <laughs> you actually, uh, this is where, uh, of course, uh, Johnny did his show. Yes, yes. And then when you took over the, you, well, you sub, subbed for Johnny. I subbed for Johnny. You and were a guest host. First year, got my ass kicked by Dave in the studio every night. So then we, Who remembers the past? Who remembers the past? Uh, but this must have fond memories when you started subbing for, uh, it does have for fond Johnny memories, Carson. Because this, was, this is sort of where it all kind of happened. I mean, when I first started subbing, well, we're both in Boston, you know, and I, and I brought my parents out here, you know, and I figured I would, like, show off. Right. You know, something interesting, you know when you're a kid and you embarrass your parents and they, oh, stop doing that, oh, you're such a... But see, it turns, as you get older, it, it comes turns back. around. It comes back. Right. They embarrass you. Right. Anyway, I bring them out here, you know, and this whole thing, so I figure I'm going to show off and take them to this fancy restaurant in Beverly Hills, you know, I figure I'm... So we're sitting in this place, mother's ooing and eye, oh, it's so expensive, oh, that's all right, mom. <laughs> so we're sitting there, and my mom goes, oh, that, oh, that woman over there, oh, that looks like Connie Stevens. That looks just like, I said, well, Mom, this is Beverly Hills. That is Connie Stevens, you know. She goes, oh, I love Connie Stevens. Oh, she was so, oh, I used to enjoy her. So I said, well, you want me to see if she'll come over? Oh, no, don't, please, don't. I said, Mom, I'm sure she's very nice. I walk over, and I go, uh, hi, Miss Stevens. Hi, my name's Jay, and I know I'm the guy that's filling in for Johnny, you know, blah, blah. And my mom is a huge fan. When you finish eating, any chance? She goes, well, I'll come over now. I go, well, you don't. Oh, no. I said, the nicest woman, you know. So she comes over and I go, Mom, this is Connie Stevens. My mother goes, Connie Stevens, whatever happened to you? <laughs> I, go, well, I, I go, she's doing good, Ma. She's, she's on cable. We don't get the cable where we are. No, no Ma, she has a show. I don't know. I never heard about the show. I go, thank you, Connie. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's great. I remember when, before I got this show years ago, uh, my, my mom came out to visit me and a couple of booths down in the restaurant, Bruce Springsteen, oh, sitting there. Yeah. Big, big deal. Bruce Springsteen sitting there. My mom said, that's Bruce. and that's a celebrity that even she would know. Now, that's very good when your mom knows. Yeah. When my mom, well, he's so big, and so I said to my, uh, I said to my mom, if you want to go see Bruce Springsteen, the trick is, you pretend you're going to the bathroom when you pass by, you kind of check him out. <laughs> so she said, oh, okay. So she walks by, and she walks by Bruce Springsteen's booth, and it turns out it's in like a little cul-de-sac. There's no place to go. <laughs> it's not on the way to the bathroom. And my mom walks by, and she goes like that, and then she goes, huh? Oh. <laughs> and Bruce Springsteen's like, huh? And she's just like completely trapped. Well, there you go. And then I, yeah, very fun to humiliate them. Well, at least she didn't go to the bathroom, and I think that's important. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I she never went to the since. bathroom. It would have been bad. We've noticed you're right across the hall. In right your across. Studio. I always wondered, isn't that fun? Because when we were a kid, shows are always right across the hall. Exactly. Right. This was like the fun of show businesses. Yeah. We're filming across the hall. Go across. The Every hall. day I pass. One of your amazing cars. You have this amazing well, I have car collection. I have a lot collection. of old cars. I, yeah. like, I don't like new cars. You can buy 100 old cars for the price of a new car. And they're beautiful. And they're really well, nice. Well, some so are nice, and, and some are just old cars I've had for a long time. Like, I have this one car, my 57 Buick, which I've had for like 25 years. And my wife and I have this, like, every Sunday, we're like, go get a slice of pizza. You know? Actually, this was in the studio, too. It was like the first week I started doing the show, right? I said, let's go down to Santa Monica Boulevard, get a slice of pizza. You know, so we're driving along, I got the top down, you know, and I get down to Santa Monica. And it's all blocked off because the gay pride parade is going on. Right? I said, ah, we can't get down there, the gay pride. My wife said, oh, we can't get through the gay pride. I said, ah, how are we going to get there? And then a police officer, I'm sorry, and he goes, hold, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come here, come here. I said, oh, see that, honey? Look at him, I'm in the Tonight Show a week. Thank you, officer. I'm just being, see that, honey? What do you think of that, man? So as he, he pulls me into Santa Monica, and I notice in front of me is a Cadillac, like a 57 Cadillac with three dra drag queens on it. And behind me <laughs> is another, like, 40s car with, like, this Marilyn Monroe guy, you know? And I realized the cop didn't recognize me. He just thought I was another old car in the gay pride parade. You know? So now, now I'm in the parade, and I, I can't get out of the parade. <laughs> right. right. So we're waiting along, and people are going, hey, Jay, thanks for coming out, man. <laughs> Jay, we appreciate it. It's OK, thanks, Jay. I heard that about you. Yes, yes. <laughs> You hear things, yeah. Uh, you know what? I, we, 
I've known you actually a bunch of years right, since I started right. doing this show. I never have actually have talked. I've talked to you about a lot of things. I never talked to you about your childhood because we both we both, both come, come from, from the, Boston. We both come from Boston, and I, I don't get an image. Were you a comic book guy? Yeah, my brother was a big comic book. See, guy. I was a big any comic books. Eh, kind of. Did you ever order things on the back of comics? The X-ray yeah. specs. Remember with the. Yeah, you thought, yeah, you could actually, if you, they said if you put them on, you could see the bones in your hand. Yeah, but what the glasses had were bones painted on the inside of the glasses. That, that was the thing. And they used to have, the other one was um, the sea monkeys. Yeah. And the sea monkeys playing the ukuleles, right? Right, right. And the, sea, and the mom sea monkey would have her hair in a flip like Marlo Thomas, you know, and the kids all the... But so I, the last thing I ever ordered from a comic book was something called Monkey in a Teacup. You know what that is? Never heard of that one. No. Well, in the back of the ad, they show this little monkey in a teacup doing this, you know, just sitting there. It was like $4.95, which was a lot of money when you're like 12. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I ordered this monkey in a teacup, you know, and I'm waiting, Ugh, you know, it's like six weeks. When you're a kid, it might as well be a year. So this thing comes in the mail, and it's like this package like this. You know? So I come home one day, and my mother says, there's a package for you on the dining room table, and it smells terrible. I said, oh, it's my monkey teacup. I can go into the package is doing this. I'm like this, I said, oh. So I, I <laughs> it smells awful. It's got holes in it, you know. And I open the box, and this thing goes, <laughs> this thing, it was completely pink. It was a little naked man. It wasn't monkey at all. Just some kind of thing goes, <laughs> like this. And my mother goes, <laughs> and it goes, and it goes, <laughs> it just takes off through the house, right? It just starts running through the house. So my mother starts chasing it, and she's hitting it with the broom. And I'm going to stop. You're going to kill my monkey in a teacup. And it just, it runs up, and it, it's, it's just throwing things. And then it would go to the middle of the room, stop. And it, was, it had, like, males. It was like a little naked man. And it just, it looks like this. And then, boom, it takes off again. And my mother is just screaming, chasing this thing. So finally, she opens the front door, and the monkey's... Boom, runs out into the field. Now, woo, woo, the dog is now chasing the monkey in the teacup. Ran outside. We never saw it again. I don't know what it was. <laughs> that was it. No, what are you talking about? I don't know what it was. What are you talking about? It was a little pink naked man that was this big. I don't know what it was. And I wrote to the company again, and they were out of business, and that was the last one they had. <laughs> but I never... It's water. It ran into the field, and that was it. It was, it was mine for like 10 minutes. <laughs> Can't we find out what the hell that was? I don't know what was? it was. It was just monkey in a teacup. <laughs> don't, don't tell too many people about this, It was this, a Jay. little naked, hairless man. It's, <laughs> it would make this noise, and it would run and then stop, and then take off again. It would stop long enough to see it naked, and then run. You know, I don't know what it was. It was a little pervert. I don't know what it was. It was just a little man, monkey in a teacup. That's all it was. Don't tell anyone else this story. No, I've never told Keep that story. No one tell anybody. No, no, it's, it's a true story. Now, uh, one thing I've noticed is that uh, your show, The Tonight Show, is a big show. When I travel around the world, they show this travel thing. Travel around the world? When I travel yeah. around, I'm very, <laughs> oh, that's well, funny to that you. satellite. Yeah, that I would travel is funny to you. Uh, I'm very continental, Jay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah uh, when my little private jet, yeah. my ascot. Yeah. Uh, when I travel around, you see The Tonight Show everywhere, and I'm thinking, you must get... You must have, like, do you ever have, like, world leaders contact No, no, I, one day, I, I mentioned I got a letter from Gorbachev. He watches The Tonight Show in Moscow. Don't ask me why. And he, he, he's coming to Los Angeles, and this thing Time Magazine was doing, would I come to this dinner with Gorbachev? says, oh, this is great. So my wife and I go to the dinner, and Gorbachev and his wife, Rasha, who sadly passed away, but she was, this was like last year, she's there, you know, and he doesn't speak English. So I'm trying to be very, I go, hello, hi, and I says to Mrs. Gorbachev, I said, you obviously married an older man. You're very beautiful, you know. So the translator, <laughs> and both Gorbachev and Rasha go, yeah. they go like this. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> so then she goes, and he says, she wants to know why you feel her husband is so old. I said, well, that's what I said. I said, tell her she's so beautiful, she obviously married an older man, teen bride, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Now they're really getting mad. That, that red thing on his head's like throbbing now. You know? <laughs> what, what are you, I tell the guy, what are you saying? He's saying, why do you keep saying he's old? I'm not saying he's old. I, I'm trying to be polite. I'm saying, so anyway, so the whole dinner is like, like a nightmare dinner. Right. You know? So then Gorbachev's agent comes on me. Psst. What do you think? How'd Gorby do? I said, what do you mean, how'd he do? He said, he wants to come on the show. And I said, well, I, it's an honor, but he, he doesn't speak English. You know? I said, you know, we need a translator, and a, the six minutes would be 12 minutes. It, it really wouldn't work. He goes, yeah, yeah. He said, I got another guy. Desmond Tutu. <laughs> I said, well, I mean, Desmond Tutu is a great man. I mean, but, but apartheid is such a, 
a serious subject. It's not, that's more a nightline thing. It's not really what we do. He goes, he goes forget the apartheid crap. He goes, Tutu travels. He's got funny stuff about hotels, funny stuff about science. <laughs> he's got great material. I, said, well, I, 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 I don't know. I'd have to hear his material. <laughs> he's going to think, what am I doing? One of the great men of the world, the Nobel Prize. Well, I'm going to hear his joke. I'm sorry. I'm he wants to see a stand up hunk. Oh, yeah, it's like a nightmare. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I, you know, it was so, you know, we asked when we found out we were going to come to L.A., we asked, is it possible if you come over and say hi, because we know you're very busy. Oh, yeah, and, yeah uh, busy. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get to the next Gay Pride Parade. That's yeah. right, I have a Gay Pride Parade coming up. Uh, you're a busy man. I have to apologize to world leaders. But, the, uh, but you know, you've always been really nice to, to me and to everybody here doing the show. He's, he's, he, yeah. What? No, he has. He's been nice to us. Russia. No, no. Yeah, right, yeah. Well, you he's do been a very great nice show. to us. So check him out. Of course, it's tonight's show, like I have to mention it. Jay Leno, weeknights, 11.30. Thank you, Conan. And we see Jay Leno. We're back with Romaine Stamos. Stick around.